Hey guys, it's 3.30 in the morning. We've got a four hour drive ahead of us to get to where we're going. And this is Behind the Adventure. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys what gear we carry and what we use it for to make our adventure movies. So we've arrived, it stopped raining. We're gonna go through our three main pieces of kit today. First one is our stabilization gear. Second one is our aerial kit. And the last one is our time lapse rig. And it's all in this 25 kilogram backpack. One thing I always do before we start any adventure is make sure the glide cam is perfectly balanced. I usually do it in the car with the doors closed so there's no wind impacting it. And that means it's perfectly steady. Cross the river and cross it slow. Been looking hard for the way to go In the mirror I see a fire That's burning out the old worn out liar I see the problem that's on my head Fight the field Look at all these crazy trees. This place is awesome. We're almost at the hut. We're at the hut, happy day. So this is a pretty typical New Zealand hut. We love staying in these when we can because it means we don't have to carry our tent and we get to carry more camera gear. So we usually pop in here, drop some of our gear and head off to film some more adventures. So we were hoping to climb a mountain called Te Atua Para Para, which is over there as soon as we got here. But as you can see, totally clouded in. So instead, I'm gonna show you what's in the magic backpack and how we store all of our camera gear. So first and probably most important piece of our gear is stabilization. It separates amateur looking video from um, nice cinematic type stuff. So we have our 5D as well as our road video mic uh, mounted on top of a Glidecam HD 2000. This thing is glued to me at all times and uh, our first 30 videos are filmed with just this um, and the 16 to 35 millimeter lens and that's it. I'm gonna let you in on the most important aspect of using a glide cam. It's called the glide cam shuffle and it's not in the manual, but what it does is it prevents the bobbing that you get from normal walking. You're not alone, no, not tonight. Someone cares, just hold on tight and cross the river. So the glide cam has been our go-to for a long time. Super stable, super smooth, love it. But we've been doing mountaineering recently and this has become too unsafe. So what we are now experimenting with is a wearable gimbal that holds our GoPro. Right now it's on a monopod, which is actually just one of my tripod legs. And it's just like the gimbal on the drone. It stays stable. Um, so you can do all kinds of stuff with it and stick it on different mounts. Um, we've just got this, so we're trying it out. Jenna, what do you think of the new gimbal? I really like it. It's actually really easy to use. It's a lot lighter than the glide cam, and you can get some pretty different shots with it as well. So this looks like as good a spot as, as any to throw up the drone. It's starting to get windier, but you know, can't get the shot if you don't try. It wouldn't be the first time our drone crashed. We've had a few crashes, one destroyed drone, and just a few weeks ago we had uh, it crashed on top of Mount Doom while we were camping up there. That was pretty intense. So, as you can see, I've got no special packing for the drone, just a bunch of bubble wrap. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I recommend this, but it does seem to work, even though we've got some cracks in our frame. Um, there's no 
I've never bothered to pack it in a, a big case because it just doesn't fit into a backpack. So um, we just wrap it up and hope for the best. I also don't use the little uh, drone clip that comes with it because it's got little screws and that's a really stupid design. So we just put duct tape on it because it's fast and easy and we can pull it on and off. To protect the props, uh, we just, uh, this is like a lens uh, box that I had for the, one of the Canon lenses and we just shoved the blades in there. It seems to work okay. We just spent the last 15 minutes looking for this. The problem is the more stuff you have, the more things there are to lose. Got this really great mount for the screen on the controllers, 3D printed off of eBay. And uh, my mom made me a nice purple case for the screen to protect it. It's actually got bubble wrap interwoven in the fabric, which is outstanding. Thanks, mom. So the reason uh, I love the aerials so much is that they're really great for perspective. So when you get in really super epic locations, you can show where you are, you can show um, all the scenery and, and it puts things in perspective. So this is a perfect example. Cause you've got a beautiful long ridge line that goes all the way to the hut and with the drone, I can get really far away from it to accentuate how dramatic the scenery is. I know you've been here before been trapped behind the same old door Take a deep breath and look inside Gotta fight the urge to run and hide Lift your face up and hold it high Kick the door and break down the line Drop the hurt that you now know Take the pain So I've got more of a supporting role in the aerial filming. I'm usually helping Jordan launch the drone and then I'm racing to get in position so he can fly it over me and then listen for the cues as best I can for when I need to walk and turn around. This is why I'm not usually allowed to carry things. I just about fell on my ass walking down these rocks. So this might be my favorite piece of gear. This is our Emotimo motion controller and our slider. And this allows us to get motion controlled time lapses which look really insane. The only downside is it is a task to set up and it's heavy and it takes up a lot of space. But at the end of the day, this thing is all worth it because it comes with a cool video game controller. It's like a video game for your camera. You know, we've got a pretty good scene here. We've got um, good foreground detail in the, in the dead trees and the grass. Um, in the valley below might have some good shadow movement across it as well as some clouds. We're moving on to our next location. Um, which is just on the other side of the hut, not very far away. So I just set up its end point. Now I have to move it to the start point. Then I can tell it to go and it'll take shot by shot by shot by shot by shot and get perfect time lapse. So once it's all set up, I don't have to do anything. I just sort of sit here and it takes the pictures. It's pretty easy. It's just all the setup that takes forever. Now I just sit back and enjoy. Here's to the shattered Uh, so we're just gonna do some static time lapses now. Close ins of the mountains with the clouds. These are a lot easier to do. Just hold on tight and cross the river and cross it slow. Keep your head up steady. One thing that's almost pointless is trying to glide cam in high winds. But I try every time anyways. And another night. Everything is gonna be So when we're not shooting with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens, we're usually shooting with this 70 to 200 telephoto. It's perfect for mountains, people, and focus poles. And it clips onto this handy backpack clip. I'm gonna list a lot of the tools we use in the description below and also include a link to the blog talking about our gear in more detail. We hope you guys enjoyed an inside look into how we film our adventures. 
Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any specific camera questions, make sure to put them in the comments as well. We read all of our comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you in the next adventure. Cross the river and cross it slow.